1310 WICH with Fishing Today. Whether it's in the ocean, on the pond, in the stream, or off the dock, it's all about fishing. Let's join Jesse Roach with Fishing Today on 1310 WICH. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Fishing Today on WICH, show number 26. Well, we've been at this for a little while now. Yeah. Time flies. Rick Joseph on the other side of the glass. Good morning. Good morning, Jess. As we uh, look at a change in weather. Yeah, what a week of weather, huh? Wow, a big change in weather. <laughs> <laughs> what was gray at 80 and uh, even nighttime lows in the 60s for some great striped bass fishing and tautog fishing as that's underway is uh, going to make a change to some gales and we're talking, uh, I've heard, four to six foot seas out by the race yeah, yeah. and uh, up to 40 mile an hour winds. And and out there in it, Sergeant Steve Stanko of uh, Connecticut NCON Police, he will be joining us live in a little bit from their big 40 footer out there. Is they're going to need that today, trying to keep everyone safe. And uh, of course, there's also this weekend, Black Hall Outfitters hosting a blackfish tournament. And, of course, welcome to shore fishermen, anglers from boats, uh, spear fishing, which there's probably not going to be too much of that this weekend, and uh, kayaks alike all taking part. You can go and sign up. Uh, I don't think it's too late. You can go to Black Hall Outfitters on 156 in Old Lime, and you can sign up there, and you know, there's other uh, fishing uh, tackle shops. You can also sign up for it, and that is going on. It's taking place. There's probably going to be a lot more shore fishing than out on the water for that. But good luck to everyone involved with that tournament. And uh, we're going to get into also the fall stocking report, the latest from the trout stock, and also brewstock salmon right here in eastern Connecticut. A great opportunity to get out there and try that. We'll talk about that as well. And we'll cram it all in to whatever time allows this morning on Fishing Today. And uh, we'll kick things off with fishing news and your marine forecast. All right. In the news this morning, effective at midnight next Sunday... October 30th, the Black Sea Bass Commercial Fishery will close. To date, 97.5% of the annual Black Sea Bass quota has been reported harvested. Marine Fisheries projects that 100% of the annual uh, Black Bass uh, Black Sea Bass quota will be harvested by next weekend. And effective at midnight on Tuesday... November 1st, the SCUP commercial fishery will reopen. November 1st marks the beginning of the Winter 2 period when quota management reverts to coastwide measures. The initial 12,000-pound position limit planned for Winter 2, November 1st through December 31st, was increased in response to the quota underage, which occurred during Winter 1, which was January 1st through April 30th. So black sea bass at 10 fish through next weekend through October 29th. Black sea bass license endorsement is required. Summer flounder season closed. Tautog open now through December 24th. 10 fish under a limited access license and 4 fish under either a restricted commercial fishing license or a restricted commercial lobster pot fishing license. American Lobster closed. The closed season for lobster is September 8th through November 28th. Inclusive, this closure applies to all gears, recreational and commercial in uh, lobster management area 6, which is Long Island Sound. Bluefish at 1,000 pounds. Smooth dogfish closed. Spiny dogfish, 5,000 pounds. Winter flounder, 50 pounds or 38 fish, unless the fish were taken in federal waters under federal uh, ground fish permit. And commercial uh, fishery uh, trip limits and quotas. More information is online at 860 or on the phone at 860-434-6374, that 24-hour recorded message there of current possession limits. Or visit them online at ct.gov slash d-e-e-p slash TL, the department monitors landings and adjusts trip limits according to department regulations in an attempt to provide fishing opportunity throughout the year for all participants in the commercial fishery. That phone number again, 
For more information, 860-434-6374. That's uh, fishery trip limits and quotas. And uh, also online at ct.gov slash DEP slash TL. Forecast, marine forecast for this weekend. Gale warning in effect through Sunday afternoon. We have a wind advisory in effect beginning at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Winds today, northwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, gusts up to 25 knots for today, becoming westerly 25 to 30 knots, gusting up to 45 knots later today. Seas 2 to 3 feet, building to 3 to 5 feet this afternoon with occasional showers, possibly. Visibility 1 to 3 nautical miles this morning. Then tonight, west winds 25 to 30 knots, diminishing to 20 to 25 knots after midnight, gusts up to 35 knots overnight, and seas up to 4 to 6 feet tonight with a chance of showers. And westerly winds on Sunday, 20 to 25 knots with gusts up to 30 knots and seas at 3 to 5 feet. And Sunday night, west winds 15 to 20 knots, gusts up to 30 knots, diminishing to 10 to 15 knots with gusts up to 20 knots after midnight. Seas 2 to 4 feet chance of showers after midnight Sunday night. So quite windy this weekend and quite a chop out there on the water. Tides, New London. First low tide at 9.30 this morning. High tide will be at 3.30 this afternoon. And low tide again at 10.15 tonight. And in Old Saybrook, low tide at 10.16 this morning. High tide at 4.40 this afternoon and low tide at 11 o'clock tonight. Barometric pressure, 29.26 inches. And water temp, eastern Long Island Sound, 62 degrees. So what do you think about that wind in those uh, those seas this weekend? Yeah, that's going to be interesting, um, especially here's the thing. Here's the kicker. And for a lot of people who come from the inland areas, like us on the shoreline, we're pretty familiar with conditions, how that works, tides, rips, and whatnot. But people who come from the inland who may not be out on the sound or even the rivers, Connecticut River, Thames River, as much are really unfamiliar with what goes on out there. And when you have a north wind coming down, especially at that, that rate rate of speed, that means you're getting pushed out into the sound. So that's very important to know, and uh, it's critical to know where you're launching, know where you are. Are you in a cove? Are you blocked? You know, is the wind blocking? Um, and when the tide is coming in, now you have tide versus wind, which is going to create some big waves. So these are things to understand and acknowledge before you even go out on the water and maybe make a better decision to even fish from shore when situations like this occur. Even in the summertime, as we saw when those people were out in ham and acid on an SUP and I think on kayaks, they got pushed out. Uh, two people died in that incident and the uh, and two people that lived ended up on the north shore of Long Island and that is coming out of uh, ham and acid over in Madison. Right. So I remember that story, yeah. It's uh, very important and, and we don't want to see anyone get hurt. We, of course, here in the fishing community, want everyone to go out and have a good time um now granted there's a tog tournament going on this weekend uh probably best bet is from shore unless you have a really sheltered area that you think uh, you'll be okay because you you tend to anchor up when you're fishing for blackfish and if you don't have a trolley that's going to put your anchor line towards the front or back of your kayak if you're in a kayak or even in a boat you don't want to have that kayak hanging off the side as that can just pull you right over. Um, there's there's really just a lot of safety factors to take into consideration when uh, going through the motions of, of trying to go out and have a good time fishing, which we want everyone to do. So um, speaking of having a good time fishing, uh, guys out in the water, the NCON police are uh, out there to keep us safe. And uh, Steve Stanko is out on the water today. And uh, we're going to try to get him on the phone right after the break. Fishing Today on WICH continues right after this.
Hello, my name is Cynthia, owner of A New Life Home Care, your local source for all your in-home health care and personal care needs. Did you know that chronic conditions are the leading cause of death and disability in the U.S.? Chronic conditions such as heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, obesity, arthritis, autism spectrum, and MS are among the most common. We at A New Life Home Care specialize in chronic conditions such as these and the comforts of your own home because home is where you belong. A New Life Home Care is also your local short-term respite care provider, housekeeper, child and family service specialist. So if you or a family member are facing home care decisions, you have the right to choose. Choose the best. Choose a new life home care. We are locally owned right here in Norwich and know the area and probably your friends too. We can be reached at 860-501-9526. That's 860-501-9526. Online is a new life care home is where you belong. Playhouse is proud to be really the Clooney Music, exhilarating and inspiring biography of Rosemary Clooney, one of America's favorite female singers. Tenderly offers a fresh, personal, and poignant picture of the woman whose unparalleled talent and unbridled personality made her a legend. Rosemary Clooney came to prominence in the 1950s with hits like Come On to My House, Mumbo Italiano, Tenderly, Half As Much, Hey There, and This Old House. She recorded until her death in 2002. Tenderly, the Rosemary Clooney musical opens at the Ivoryton Playhouse on Wednesday, October 26th and runs through Sunday, November 13th. For matinee and evening performances, ticket prices and directions, call the Playhouse box office at 860-767-7318 or visit their website at ivorytonplayhouse.org. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Early detection is the best treatment, so get screened today. The American Cancer Society at Cancer.org has resources to help you get screened at your local clinic or hospital with or without insurance. Cancer.org has options for treatment, support, and can help guide you through the uncertainties of a breast cancer diagnosis. Get screened today and own your future. October is the month to get screened if you have not done so in the last year. This is Romeo. And Crystal, owner of Engine 6 Pizza Company in Norwich. In the United States, women breast cancer death rates are the second highest of any other cancer. Schedule your yearly mammogram and give yourself a fighting chance to defeat breast cancer because early detection can save your life. Did you know the majority of breast cancers occur in women who do not have a family history? I'm Sandra Wheeler, owner of Four Peace of Mind, organizing homes and offices. I urge all women to get screened for you and all those who love you. We are in it together. Hall Communications Radio Group. All right, we are back fishing today on WICH, and with me on the phone live from Long Island Sound, Sergeant Steve Stanko of the CT NCON Police. How are you doing, Steve? Good. Good morning, Jesse. Nice to talk to you again. It was nice seeing you on the water the other day. Yeah, yeah, it was great. We randomly ran into each other out there as you, as you guys were doing your thing, and um, and you know, and, and in fact, I just wanted to point out, I'm seeing uh, some comments on our Facebook page. Uh, from our friend Thomas, who's a kayak fisherman, he says, um, you know, he says to let the Sarge know we appreciate their enforcement efforts. So we're getting oh. some good response from our uh, Facebook friends. Well, thank you. That's wonderful to hear. We appreciate that, and that's oftentimes the case when we see people out in the water. They say the same things. It's very nice to hear, and we uh, we certainly appreciate it. And we love seeing all the sportsmen out there, and um, it's been doing pretty well. Blackfish and different species. You have to excuse me for a second. I'm over at millstone area and i have to kind of uh work with some security people over here for a second so i apologize it seems like it's a little delay <laughs> that's okay so, and, uh, uh, yes uh, um go ahead jesse if you had a question oh well yeah um it's going to be a busy date for you out there i'd imagine with the winds picking up and uh it's going to be a real turn in the weather out there it really is it's uh i guess some real cold weather supposed to cold fronts coming in we're going to get some uh, pretty pretty cold weather coming from the north, so it should be pretty interesting. It's blowing a little bit uh, out here now, but uh, we're getting set up to head out. And uh, actually, we're going out on our 42-foot West Mac today. We want to get some uh, boating hours on that. And we're probably going to do a little bit more commercial uh, fishing aspect-wise um, rather than the recreational things today. Sure, yeah. We actually just uh, did the latest report from uh, the DEP about uh, closures and, and the latest updates from the commercial fisheries. We try to keep everyone up to date here on the show. And um, Yeah, we just, um, they just, it's, it's you know, as you know, it's a fluid 
uh, area, especially with the feds and um, even the state fishery. So we're always um, we're always in interaction with them. And I guess I just actually I got a flyer in the mail today about uh, scup uh, opening back up for November first for the commercial guys. But other than that, there's a there's few minor changes, and I don't have that uh, sheet in front of me at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, we just put that report on. So we did get that info out there. We we want to definitely keep everyone informed. And uh, no, uh, you and I were talking about uh, as the uh, last winter was very warm, and hey, there's a potential for this winter to be another warm one with the incidental fish that come through. And uh, you have some information for some of the anglers out there? For the incidental catches you're talking about, Jesse? Yes. Yeah, we're just talking about that a little bit, and especially over here at Millstone, there's high propensity because of the discharge in the warm water so we do get some unusual fish staying but um it would be deemed like an incidental catch if it's not regulated by a state statute or by a federally protected you know we really wouldn't have any um method of uh of of regulating ourselves so it'd be up to the angler you know what they wanted to do with it i mean obviously ask yourself is it an edible fish is it something you want to maybe put back because it's a novelty uh, that sort of thing, but like I said, if it's an incidental catch and it doesn't fit the requirements, you know, we really don't have any uh, any say in the matter. Yeah, I'd say when in doubt, take a picture and let it go. There you go. I mean, that's <laughs> great advice, and uh, I mean, that's what's something we would like to see ourselves. I mean, because it's just interesting to see them out here and give another angler a chance to see said fish or whatever it is. And now, for people who don't really know what you guys do, let us know what what goes on in your daily uh, routine. What what is uh, what? It, tell us about the Connecticut Encon Police. Sure. Well, it's a very unique law enforcement agency in the fact that we are spread apart, not only physically in our terms of our geographical patrol, but our duties. I mean, first and foremost, we are police officers. We go through the uh, Meriden uh, State Police Academy in our state it's a six-month process and then upon graduation you have field training duties to to handle and if you make it through all that then you become a full-fledged conservation officer which our duties like i said are varied we um a typical day on patrol it depends where you're stationed in connecticut Uh, i'm a supervisor in the marine district and our officers deal obviously more uh with a lot of wreck fishing a lot of commercial fishing in the marine areas and we also have a host of state parks so not only do we do fish, typical fish and game enforcement, but we handle all boating issues. So we'll handle any boating accident in the state. Um, we do boating safety checks. We do uh, BUI patrols, boating under the influence. And we also do, we have a lot of duties relying with our state parks. So any criminal actions that occur in the state parks is our responsibility, and we have to patrol and maintain safety there. So on the shoreline areas, we have a number of really large parks, Rocky Neck, Hammonasset, Sherwood Island, and those are um, those are really require a lot of our time, especially during the summer months. Mm-hmm. But we still try to fit in our general patrols, and we also work with the federal uh, agencies. Like, for instance, Millstone here, we do a lot of security checks, and we also do uh, interaction with the feds for different um, marine species, if you will, commercial fishing. So it's, it's quite varied, and then an inland officer may have some different duties obviously more maybe more fish and game uh some parks in there in inland part of the state as well as uh the police duties so we, we stay pretty varied a, a typical day could, could go anywhere from uh being out on a vessel here now and having to come in and handle something in a park or a boating issue and uh it runs the gamut i would imagine too uh, not just with enforcement but i would imagine that there's a lot of medical calls out there there are, especially in the parks and in the water, and we'd all, we all have to prepare for those. Uh, we have a number of vessels on the shoreline that we utilize. We have uh, some sea arcs, uh, 25 foot, 23 foot. We have several zodiacs. We have a safe boat, which is a really great uh, patrol vessel. It allows a number of officers to go in, and it's covered so we can go during inclement weather, and uh, it handles seas quite well. So it's, it's varied, and like I said today, we're going to go out on our essentially our lobster boat uh it's a 42 foot west max so it's a good platform we could also bring one of our our rib boats onto there if we needed so it's a good like i said sort of platform that officers could deploy off of and we interact oftentimes with the state police and coast guard out here so we do a lot of different uh interactions i should say 
Mm -hmm. And then uh, I see, too, that there is a stock for the salmon up on the Chetucket River. And uh, I know a lot of people don't really understand uh, not snagging them, not using treble hooks, things like that. Uh, do, you, do you sometimes even have some enforcement going on when you get these specialty fisheries going on? Yeah, it's very much so. And we try to put, we try and uh, keep that information readily available in the fishing guide or online. Everyone, uh, we do have a nice, if you just, it's, um, if people were to Google, you know, state income police, it's a website. I don't have the exact website right now, but if you go, um, it's easy enough to find it. On there, there's some really great hot links. You could link to uh, any upcoming information or if you had a question regarding, you know, what you just spoke of. But yeah, our officers are, you know, deal with that as well, and we try to educate the public, etc. And for the most part, people are well behaved, though. You, you'd say. I'll tell you, mainly it really is. If there's really great sportsmen in Connecticut, I've done this. I've been on this job now for over ten years, and uh, really good people. Uh, obviously, it's the minority of of uh, people who cause issues and uh, you know violating some regulations and stuff. But like I said, that's the that's the real minority. Um, excuse me, one second. I just have to pull through. A security gate here, so excuse me. Sure. And like I said, Jesse, I mean, running into people like you on the water the other day, and other people who are, uh, you know, happy to show us their creel catch and, and let us know what's going on, and telling us, you know, what what they've been catching. And unfortunately, a lot of short fish they're throwing back, and uh, you know, good banter out there. We have a a really good time. That's good to hear. You know, it was interesting. I saw. Um... I saw yesterday I was out on the Connecticut River, and a deer actually crossed from Old Saybrook to Old Lyme. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> it's really cool to see. Which you, brings you me see some great stuff when you're on the water like that. I mean, in your kayak or on a small boat, it's really like you know novel. There's interesting that things have opened up, and uh, you know, in, in same vein as catching the incidentals, you see these you know mammal species that you don't usually see on the shoreline, and uh, there's some really that's a beautiful area, especially the Connecticut River mm -hmm. basin there. Which just brings me to, we've got to get going here. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but real quick. Now, the deer ended up on an island, and now I posted the, the video of it going swimming, and then some of the bow and uh, crossbow hunters were actually wondering, well, what are the uh, legalities for actually going to a place like Cavs Island or, or some of these islands here for, for that kind of uh, game catching? Well, it would just fall on, normally under, if, is it a private... Uh, land area. If so, you'd need proper permission, etc., from the landowner. Is it a state area? Um, some of that we have some WMAs out there. We have uh, uh, different islands or uh, are some state-controlled islands that do allow it. But it would all be in our, our hunting and fishing guides. And if there was a specific question, they can contact um, in our fishing guide or online. You could look at the uh, headquarters that that's applicable for that area. For instance, O Line headquarters would be for that area and call down there and speak with a conservation officer who, who patrols that area if you had any uh, in-depth questions. Great, great. Well, Steve, I appreciate your time, and of course you have an open invite to join us on the show. Anything comes up or any kind of uh, situations that you, you want to get out to the public, please do feel free to come join us again. And, Thank you uh, very much. And, Jesse, also just let people know out there that if they have any questions, stop down to uh, O-Lime headquarters. I'm there sometimes during the week, during for administrative duties, but you could always reach one of us. And uh, please, we love to hear from people, and we like to see more people out in the water and uh, enjoying themselves. Great. Well, hey, be safe out there. I know the weather's going to turn. You're looking at some really big waves coming your way. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good, Jesse. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. All right, that's Sergeant Steve Stanko, the Connecticut NCON police, joining us. Of course, if you have any questions, you can also contact them on the website or directly at DEEP headquarters located on in Old Lyme, right at the mouth of the Connecticut River. Well, we've got to take a quick break. Hopefully, we'll have time to let you know about the trout stock uh, happening here in eastern Connecticut, and that's right after this, Fishing Today on WICH. The Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra begins its 70th anniversary season on Saturday, October 22nd at 8 p.m. with an exotic offering of pieces designed to thrill. The concert, titled 1001 Nights, features Grammy-nominated pianist and Steinway artist Boris Berman performing Bartok's Adventurous Piano Concerto No. 3. 
bringing the program to a glorious close is Scheherazade, the crowd favorite work by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. With its lush ornamentation and beautiful violin passages representing Scheherazade and the stories she told to save her life, this piece will dazzle the audience for the season opening concert. Tickets are available for as low as $12 and $28 with discounts for anyone under 30, active or retired military members and senior citizens. Call the ECSO office today at 860-443-2876. That's 860-443-2876. This is Father Greg Galvin, the Director of Vocations for the Catholic Diocese of Norwich, Connecticut. If you are a Catholic man who is single in high school, college, or the workaday world and sense God is calling you to be one of his priests, do not be afraid. God's purpose for you in this world might be to serve him and his church as one of his priests, to baptize, confect the Eucharist, preach the gospel, absolve from sin, anoint the sick and suffering, feed the hungry, bury the dead, comfort the widow, prepare couples for holy matrimony, visit those in prison, hospitals, and nursing homes. Teach the people of God to pray, to worship, and to evangelize. Lead them to eternal life. If you sense God is calling you, respond now. Email vocations at norwichdiocese.net Visit God-Calls.com or call 860-887-9294. The benefits are eternal. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Let's talk about power. To illustrate this, allow me to tell you a story about how I moved a tow truck 25 miles using only my index finger. I was stranded with a flat tire. I opened the GEICO app. Then, with a few taps of my finger, I beckoned emergency roadside assistance and a tow truck to my car. I invite you all to unleash the full potential of your fingertips with the GEICO app. Thank you. Chemical-resistant gloves, coveralls, earplugs, Granger. Dust masks, portable eyewash stations, hard hats, Granger. Anti-fog safety glasses, fall protection harnesses, face shields, Granger. Respirators, welding jackets, pipe repair systems, Granger, Granger, Granger. Protection blankets, steel toe boots, caution signs, Granger. They've got over 100,000 safety products. When you think safety, think Granger. When it comes to safety, Granger's got your back. Call, click safety.granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Fishing today on WICH. Real quick before we get out of here, the stocking report for the fall trout in eastern Connecticut. We've got Beach Pond. Wangambog, otherwise known as Coventry Lake, Black Pond in Middlefield, Gardner Lake, Long Pond, Cedar Lake, and Mashapog Lake, all stocked with trout. So if you want to escape the wind and the sound and all that, go trout fishing. That's, uh, again, Beach Pond, Wangambog.